Welcome everyone. I'm Julia Charlton and I'm the Chair of the Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. Thank you so much for joining us today for this online event, especially those who are tuning in early morning from Asia or in the evening from Bermuda and that part of the world. We're particularly delighted to bring this program to you as we have an incredibly exceptional speaker lineup for everyone. And on behalf, on behalf of the Chamber, I'd like to first extend a very warm welcome to the Premier of Bermuda, the Honourable Edward David Burt, JP MP, for taking the time to join us this evening, his time. We are truly honoured to have him join us. As well as being the youngest Premier of Bermuda, David Burt is a seasoned entrepreneur and veteran international businessman with immense experience and knowledge of the Bermudan economy, having been on the Bermudan Tourism Board, National Training Board, the Bermuda Chamber of Commerce and the Bermuda Economic Development Corporation, and in several ministerial positions. His active role in local and international public service institutions and community organisations makes him an unparalleled source of insight into what makes Bermuda such an ideal platform for offshore and international business. We're also very grateful to David Hart, the CEO of the Bermuda Business Development Agency, BDA, and Ms. Flora Wong of Conyers Dillon Pierman in Hong Kong for being here with us today to share their respective areas of expertise. David Hart, as CEO of the BDA since last year, has shown dynamic and collaborative leadership in the expansion of Bermuda's economy, with a special focus on ensuring that this growth is both sustainable and equitable for the nation. He's also been integral in attracting investment into Bermuda's targeted sectors, which is not surprising considering his private prior experience as the Executive Vice President of the Florida Chamber of Commerce, which is amongst the largest business advocacy organizations in the Americas. Flora Wong's over 17 years of experience in the corporate legislation of Bermuda and advisory expertise for Bermuda Incorporated listed companies in Hong Kong gives her a critical um, legal insights for understanding Bermuda's success as a platform. As a corporate lawyer myself, I'm very excited to hear more about her experience and work. Before we start, I'd also like to share how important these forums of discussion are within the context of the Commonwealth. As we gallop through the digitalization of the global post-pandemic economy and face issues as intimidating as climate change and stagflation, there are many unknowns and anxieties regarding what the future holds. Commonwealth nations are uniting and discussing pathways for mutual benefit and growth in these uncertain times. And we hope that by delving deep into the success factors that make Bermuda exemplary for sustainable and uptrending development, we can understand and extract vital points of learning that could be of benefit to all member states of the Commonwealth. Now, without further ado, Andrew Wells will give a short introduction of the speakers and he will be the moderator of our webinar today. Over to you, Andrew. Thank you so much, Julia. Uh, many thanks to Julia, our chairman, our chairperson for her introduction to the Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong and to this extremely important event, Bermuda, the ideal offshore platform for international business. My name is Andrew Wells, and I'm Secretary General of the Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. And I too am delighted as moderator to have the honor to jointly introduce our three extremely distinguished speakers. As Julia said, our keynote speaker is the Honorable E. David Burt, JPMP, the Premier of Bermuda, an internationally renowned figure in both the public and private sectors, who became Bermuda's youngest Premier in 2017. As a trend-setting entrepreneur, Premier Burt started GMD Consulting Limited, focusing on IT project management, and co-founded Hitch Limited, which I understand is Bermuda's answer to Uber. Before being elected Premier, uh, David, as Julia mentioned also, served on many uh, important bodies in the territory, including the Tourism Board, the National Training Board, the Chamber of Commerce, um, and um, several ministerial positions. He is extremely active in both local and from our perspective, importantly, international public service and community organizations. Our second distinguished speaker is Ms. Flora Wong, corporate partner of Conyers Dillon Pierman, who will share with us a Hong Kong perspective on Bermuda. Flora's corporate expertise includes initial public offerings, IPOs, joint ventures, capital restructuring, privatizations, debt financing, private equity, and M&A. She has uh, over 17 years of experience in Bermudan corporate law, 
and advises Bermuda Incorporated listed companies in Hong Kong on a wide range of commercial and corporate matters. Our third speaker, um, as mentioned, is Mr. David Hart, the Chief Executive Officer of the Bermuda Business Development Agency. David leads the BDA in expanding Bermuda's economy by attracting investment and employment to the territory. As Julia also said, before joining the BDA, David was the Executive Vice President of the Florida Chamber of Commerce, which is one of the largest business advocacy organizations in all the Americas. And he's led numerous de delegations to Europe, East Asia, South America, and the Middle East to secure additional FDI for Bermuda. So a huge welcome then to all our speakers. Without further preliminaries, I wish to uh, invite the Honorable David Burt, Premier of Bermuda, to take the virtual floor. Mr. Premier. Uh, good morning from Bermuda, uh, Mr. Secretary General, Madam Chair, thank you for your kind invitation to speak to the Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce about why Bermuda is the premier offshore platform for international business. Firstly, I must admit that I am not a big fan of the term offshore when describing Bermuda, but that is because we are a jurisdiction that prides ourselves on our regulatory excellence which is what separates us from many other jurisdictions. I often remind persons that Bermuda is a great place to raise capital for high quality business, but a terrible place to try to hide it. <clears throat> what is the most accurate description of Bermuda? And who are we as a country? There are a few accurate descriptions one can use. You can call us the world's risk capital. You can call us a leading financial services jurisdiction the largest issuer of insurance linked securities. And more recently, you can refer to us as a growing leader in the FinTech and digital asset industry. But how did Bermuda become what we are today and develop our unique reputation in the international business community? It starts with the truth of who we are. When you're on a 21 square mile island, a thousand kilometers from the nearest country, you must adapt to survive. We are the oldest British overseas territory with the oldest parliament in the Western Hemisphere. We are a self-governing country with over 400 years of political stability and parliamentary democracy. Yes, Bermuda is small, but we are a country that has consistently proven that small population and size does not mean that you are limited to small local businesses. We have shown that with the right regulatory framework, investment in human capital, political and economic stability, and the willingness to innovate, even geographically small countries can play an important role in international business and the global market. Bermudians recognized this centuries ago, as in the 17th century when Bermuda saw there was a need for more efficient ships to transport goods. Our innovative spirit led us to develop the Bermuda rig, with triangular sails that allowed ships the ability to sail upwind, maneuver in shallow waters and chain sailing forever and led to sailboats becoming one of Bermuda's top exports at the time. In 1784, the Bermuda Marine Assurance Company was established and wrote a policy to cover the shipment of cargo from Bermuda to Philadelphia aboard the Liberty vessel for 400 British pounds at a premium rate of two and a half percent a preview of the insurance leader that Bermuda would come in the future. In the 1960s, Bermuda's first captive insurance company was founded. And in the decades that followed, Bermuda's insurance and reinsurance industry continued to grow, innovate, and invest in human capital. Today, we can say with confidence that we are the world's risk capital, a global insurance and reinsurance center, and a leading financial services jurisdiction. Our financial services platform is built on four principles, brand, employment, diversification, and sustainability. Brand refers to high quality, well-known financial services corporations that are domiciled on our shores. Employment speaks to continuous upskilling of Bermuda's workforce to meet market needs, while also ensuring the long-term creation of job opportunities within our economy. 
Diversification speaks the very nature of businesses within our economy. These products local businesses offer and their own origin. Bermuda can boast to being the home of companies from the United States, Europe, and even Hong Kong. And we are proud of that geographical diversification as well as the wide spectrum of products these businesses offer to their clients and to their customers. The Bermuda insurance market has developed unparalleled expertise in areas such as property catastrophe insurance and reinsurance, protecting the world's most vulnerable population from climate perils. Contributing more than $65 billion to U.S. catastrophe losses between 2001 and 2017. And today, Bermuda is the single most crucial, crucial property and catastrophe market in the world. 14 of the world's top 50 reinsurers hold licenses on the island. And since 1997, Bermuda's commercial insurers and reinsurers have paid out over half a trillion dollars to policyholders and cedents in the United States, the European Union, and the United Kingdom. Our insurance industry has grown to include life and long-term annuity insurance within the last decade. Not only have these companies found a home in Bermuda, but they have experienced tremendous growth. Additionally, Bermuda and Switzerland are the only two countries in the world that are rated with regulatory equivalents with both the United States and the European Union when it comes to the insurance industry. In addition to insurance, Bermuda has also remained a leading jurisdiction for trusts, family offices, and fiduciary services for over 100 years. We are home to the big four accounting firms, globally recognized trustees, globally recognized law firms and lawyers who serve a broad range of international business and high net worth clients. Our strength and our diversity lies within our innovation culture. This culture has been established through a long cooperative relationship between three key stakeholders, industry, the regulator, and legislators. And this relationship is what I refer to as the real Bermuda Triangle. Industry provides inspiration and innovation for new businesses, models, products, and services. Our sole financial services regulator, the Bermuda Monetary Authority, provides confidence and trust that the innovations that are being proposed do not destabilize the existing financial system or pose a risk to the country's ratings and legislators facilitate collaboration between the industry and regulators, ensuring a swift transition from innovation to trusted best practices from the industry and also speedily implementing legislation. This cooperation between stakeholders also ensures that we maintain our tireless commitment to adhering to the highest international standards and regulation, transparency and compliance with global tax standards. As a note, Bermuda recently scored in the top six globally on its recent anti-money laundering assessment, and that's top six out of all the countries in the world. As a result, we built a stable of reputable companies keen to leverage our regulatory framework to showcase to institutional and retail customers that they have competent oversight and are managing their risks. All of this, along with the vision and leadership of the government of Bermuda, is what is helping us to build our digital assets industry. Bermuda's journey into fintech and digital assets began in 2017, shortly after my election in July of that year. Over the next few months, I became convinced that Bermuda needed to embrace this new industry and start building. And the reason for that is because we wanted to ensure that if innovations were happening that could challenge our existing industry such insurance, we wanted to ensure they happened right here in Bermuda. I also took confidence from the fact that Bermuda already had a world-renowned framework on which we could build this new industry. We aim to recognize digital assets as a new asset class and focus on the risk of this new technology rather than trying to fit these new in innovations into existing boxes by classifying them as securities or commodities. In 2018, we rolled out a comprehensive regulatory framework, which became the Bermuda Digital Asset Business Act. 
making us the first country to enact comprehensive legislation and regulation for digital asset companies. Thanks to this formula, our digital assets industry continues to build momentum, having grown by 50% thus far this year and includes 15 digital asset companies licensed and regulated by the BMA, including companies such as Circle and Bittrex. And FinTech is more than just digital assets. It is also insurance. And our FinTech ecosystem now includes seven innovative insurer general businesses, including the world's largest insurer of digital assets, a company called Rel. Bermuda is well-placed to be at the forefront of digital evolution. And we look forward to our FinTech and digital assets industry continuing to develop with the additional Jewel Bank, Bermuda's first new bank in 21 years. They will provide essential services to our local digital asset companies that will accelerate industry growth. Bermuda's understanding of the future of business does not just stop at FinTech. We are also well aware of and impacted by the growing threat of climate change, which I know is also a concern for those of you in Hong Kong. Climate is undoubtedly the most critical topic of our time. It is a rare issue that impacts the lives of every person around the globe now and will continue to do so in the future. The world must be prepared for both the environmental and financial implications and risks that climate change has already begun to impose. Bermuda aims to become the world's climate risk capital, just as we've become the global capital of natural catastrophe risk protection with tropical storms, wildfire, flood, and other climate-driven insured risks. We are confident that we can play a critical role in helping high-risk regions bolster their financial resilience to the rising tide of climate peril and play a leading role in climate risk finance. If this is the kind of ecosystem you wish to be a part of, you will also be happy to know that the Governor Muta understands that innovative immigration policies can help to support economic growth and business development. That is why we launched the Economic Investment Certificate Program in March of 2021, to make it possible for persons who wish to reside here and do business here to do just that. I will not go too far into the Economic Investment Certificate, as I know the CEO of the Bermuda Business Development Agency, Mr. David Hart, will provide a clear picture as to what the EIC is and the statistics behind it. But I will say that the EIC represents that Bermuda is open for business and we are open for investment and we welcome those persons who wish to invest and join our economy. We welcome high quality businesses from various sectors that come and innovate. And you have my assurance that the government and associated industries will provide you the support that you need. I sincerely hope that you found this overview informative and I'm looking forward to answering your questions later. Thank you for the opportunity to address you today and I look forward to continued collaborations between our two jurisdictions. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Premier. I'm sure there will be a lot of questions. It was a tour de force, if I may say, uh, both strategically and also in terms of detail, ranging from the regulatory excellence of the jurisdiction which you had, the historical perspective going back to 1784 or even before that, uh, to the um, more recent developments since you yourself became Premier and a very interesting new definition of, uh, of the Bermuda Triangle. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. And uh, may I now call upon uh, our, our second uh, panelist and honored guest, uh, for, uh, Ms. Flora Wong from Conyers to uh, present her views from a, a Hong Kong perspective. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, the Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. Uh, for inviting me to participate in this very rare and unusual opportunity to speak alongside, of course, the Premier of Bermuda, Honorable uh, Mr. David Bird. Uh, truly an honor to speak alongside with you and also with the CEO of the Bermuda Development Agency. Um, it is truly an honor and um, to be able to speak to you all 
uh, from a Hong Kong uh, legal perspective, um, uh, the use of Bermuda companies uh, in the Asia market and also in Hong Kong. Um, just a note about um, what we do. Um, I'm a partner at uh, Conyu Steel and Payment. Uh, we are Bermuda-based uh, law firm. Uh, our headquarters in Bermuda actually was established uh, on, uh, more than 19 years ago in uh, 1928. Um, so in Hong Kong, we've been in Hong Kong for now uh, over 36 years. Uh, my practice basically focus on uh, corporate commercial work, uh, banking work, um, and M&A's privatizations. Uh, before practicing as a Bermuda lawyer, uh, I practiced as a Hong Kong lawyer uh, for a couple of years, um, also with actually with Julia uh, a long, long time ago. Um, so I have a good experience as a corporate lawyer, as a Hong Kong corporate lawyer, as well as a Bermuda uh, corporate lawyer. Um, so I'm just going to share with you um, my PowerPoint on um, why Bermuda is an ideal jurisdiction uh, for participants, market participants in Hong Kong. So why Bermuda? Um, Bermuda has been around and been used by uh, Hong Kong businesses for a very, very long time, actually. Um, probably one of the uh, more well-known and largest Hong Kong-based uh, companies group, uh, such as Hong Kong Land, uh, John, Jardine Matheson, they were all incorporated in Bermuda. Um, and that was probably around almost 40 years ago. So the Hong Kong um, businesses um, are familiar with uh, Bermuda as a jurisdiction of choice. Um, and currently uh, in Hong Kong, we have about 2,500 companies listed uh, on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and about 500 representing 20% of the listed companies in Hong Kong are in fact uh, incorporated in Bermuda. Uh, so a very main area of my practice was to, uh, is to advise Bermuda uh, incorporated Hong Kong listed companies on all kinds of uh, transactions that they enter into in terms of compliance, M&A, acquisitions. Um, in the Hong Kong market, uh, Bermuda incorporated companies are most often uh, used as a holding company. And underneath the holding company, they will have like intermediate companies set up in, for example, Hong Kong or BBI. And then with some, you know, if there are businesses in China, there will be a Wufi. So that is a pretty typical um, structure uh, being used by Hong Kong businesses um, when they're using a Bermuda company. And of course, apart from uh, companies, Bermuda companies being listed in Hong Kong, they are also well recognized uh, worldwide in many other major jurisdictions, uh, such as in uh, uh, Toronto, there are Bermuda companies listed on NYSE, NASDAQ, Singapore, Toronto. So investors here in Asia, in Hong Kong, are extremely familiar with uh, Bermuda incorporated companies. Um, so why, why, what is the attraction? Um, from a legal perspective, I think you know, um, is a Bermuda is a common law based uh, jurisdiction similar to Hong Kong. So the investors in Hong Kong are confident and familiar with the overall uh, framework. Um, and of course, you know, the Bermuda, the main uh, governing uh, companies legislation is the Bermuda Companies Act, uh, which is a very well written piece of legislation, um, is well balanced, um, it's not over regulating, it's business friendly. Um, so um, it's an easy to understand piece of legislation. So investors in Hong Kong and Asia market are confident um, in, in the framework and also as well as in the court system in Bermuda as you know, there will be access to the Privy, Privy Council when there's an appeal. Um, and of course, you know, Mr. Premier has already mentioned that you know, Bermuda has been uh, very innovative in terms of its legal regime and also products. Um, in, uh, of course, you know, Bermuda has been one of the pioneer jurisdictions to introduce legislations in relation to the fintech industry, uh, including the ICO Act that was introduced in 2018, um, Digital Asset Business Act. Uh, and of course, you know, it, it also offered to uh, some products which are not offered in other jurisdictions, such as the Bermuda LLC, uh, which is a Bermuda limited liability company, which is not a, a, the normal lim limited company, which we usually understand is a LLC is a hybrid uh, between a partnership 
um, and the limited company, which provides great flexibility to um, shareholders in deciding how they want to allocate, um, for example, profits and dividends. Um, so it's an innovative product that is being offered uh, in Bermuda. And of course, in Bermuda also, you know, there's a product called Bermuda PTC, which is a private trust company, which is extremely useful uh, in uh, public clients um, funds trust uh, area as you know, um, a, a family can set up their own private trust company to act as a trustee without using an outside licensed trustee that gives great control um, over uh, the settlers uh, in terms of what the trustee would do. Um, and of course, you know, Bermuda is probably one of the very rare jurisdictions that offers a private uh, parliament act. Uh, sometimes we come across Bermuda companies uh, incorporated with their own private parliament act that applies to that company and actually will address the different needs of that company. So the legal framework um, in Bermuda is certainly very appealing uh, to investors in Hong Kong. It's probably one of the main attractions why Bermuda has been an ideal jurisdiction of choice uh, for many years. Um, of course, there's also the jurisdictional neutral, uh, neutrality um, because we come across cross-border transactions from time to time and you have investors from different countries and they would like to go for jurisdictions that they are confident in and also with the legal system that they understand. So Bermuda is also a very ideal jurisdiction when parties wish to engage in cross-border transactions. Uh, from a regulatory uh, perspective, um, echoing what uh, Mr. Premier said, um, I think, you know, for quite a long time, uh, probably some of the market participants would perceive Bermuda um, as, a, as a, an offshore tax haven. Uh, probably that is quite a misconception because in fact, Bermuda does comply with all the highest compliance standards imposed by various international uh, organizations. Um, it is in compliance with you know, uh, AML risk management requirements um, and also um, OECD, which Bermuda is now in full compliance and will be uh, uh, moved from the EU grey list very soon. Um, also, Bermuda uh, is one of the early uh, adapter of the common uh, reporting standard and country by country reporting. So with the mis misconception of Bermuda as a tax haven, um, actually, as you can see, Bermuda is in compliance with all the highest uh, anti-money laundering regulations, uh, risk management, uh, requirements. So, and also going forward, uh, understand that in 2023, Bermuda has also committed to make available um, the register of beneficial ownership uh, register. So the level of transparency and compliance that Bermuda has often uh, offer is actually um, in, in compliance with all the standards. So um, I, I understand that, you know, the, the misconception is actually um, not, not quite right. Um, so we, we have been telling our clients that, you know, uh, Bermuda is actually, compared to all the other jurisdictions, is no less in compliance with other jurisdictions. Um, from an investment perspective, uh, as I've mentioned, in cross-border transactions, uh, investors would like to choose a jurisdiction that they understand and confident in. So uh, Bermuda gives access to um, equity and capital markets globally. Uh, is well recognized by international investors um, and also is, is, is business friendly and a lot of um, large insurance companies are set up and based in uh, Bermuda. And you have um, a pool of professional talents, uh, big four accounting firms and also all the largest international law firms uh, based in Bermuda to provide resources and uh, legal support. Um, and of course, you know, Bermuda has been a test neutral uh, jurisdiction and in Hong Kong, uh, probably uh, I would say 99% of the companies incorporated in Bermuda uh, actually register as foreign companies, past 16 companies in Hong Kong. So they are also subject to the Hong Kong uh, tax regulations. Um, so Bermuda being a tax neutral jurisdiction, they will not, they are not subject to a double layer of tax, and but they are, of course are liable and subject to the tax liabilities in Hong Kong. So I would say based on the above uh, factors, you know, Bermuda is certainly an ideal jurisdiction for uh, investors and market participants when choosing um, a jurisdiction. And also, of course, it's politically uh, very stable. 
um, and with a reputable court process. So I would think that you know, Bermuda will continue to be a very successful jurisdiction in the Asian market. Thank you. That's the uh, end of my presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much indeed, Flora, from that, for that comprehensive uh, presentation of on Bermuda from our Hong Kong perspective. And again, I'm sure that there will be plenty of follow-up questions and answers later. Uh, I'd now like to invite our third panelist, uh, Mr. David Hart, uh, to, to take the floor and explain to us um, his role and what the, the Bermuda Business Development Agency is about. Thank you. Andrew, thank you. Um, good evening from Bermuda. So nice to be with you, with Julia, and with the members of the Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce of Hong Kong. I only wish we could all be gathered in person, uh, either here in Bermuda or there, both very special places on earth. Well, my name is David Hart. I am the CEO of the Bermuda Business Development Agency. And if my uh, slide deck will come up, I just have oh, 10 or 12 quick slides I'd like to take the audience through. Premier Burt, uh, Flora, honored to be on a panel with you. Uh, difficult acts to follow for sure, but I'll give it my best. If we could go to the first slide. I'll tell you just briefly uh, a bit about the Bermuda Business Development Agency. We are a public-private partnership. It's on the next slide, please. We're a public-private partnership, and um, our mission is simply to grow and diversify Bermuda's economy. We stand at the epicenter in um, connecting businesses to government uh, and our regulator and to each other. I could have the next slide. We have five key strategies that we're implementing for Bermuda in different sectors. First, asset management. So think funds, as Flora mentioned. Technology, so FinTech, InsureTech, digital finance, those great passions of our premier. There's an amazing and growing ecosystem here in all facets of technology. Uh, and related to that, I'll have an invitation for you at the at the end of the presentation. As was mentioned by the premier, we are uh, the risk capital of the of the globe. Um, one third of all property and casualty insurance comes through uh, our jurisdiction here in Bermuda, this 21 square mile island. Just uh, another way that Bermuda is known for punching above its weight. But increasingly, we're focused on Bermuda becoming the climate risk finance capital of the globe. And I think we have um, a lot to offer in that respect. We have the commitment of government leaders from the top uh, of, of Premier Burt on down. We have this highly sophisticated regulator at the Bermuda Monetary Authority that's uh, well-resourced and focused on climate issues, amongst other things. Uh, and then we have this decades-long uh, buildup of human capital that has been focused on climate um, risk around the globe. So look for Bermuda to be punching above its weight in that space um, very soon. Infrastructure is another key area for us, including uh, five current uh, subsea cables. It's another big opportunity here as we're a key connection point in the middle of the Atlantic to Europe and the Americas. And then finally, high net worth services. So family offices, et cetera. May I have the next slide? Five advantages of Bermuda. Bermuda is safe and secure and stable. As has been said, we're a, a blue chip jurisdiction. We're open, friendly, business friendly, and accessible. We're globally connected, and it's a great place to have a sophisticated lifestyle. I came here myself for the first time 10 years ago on a business trip, and like many who've ever stepped foot in Bermuda, I instantly fell in love with it. But I was on the beach uh, as a tourist, and it wasn't until my second trip that I realized just how impressive the business center in Hamilton was as well. Can I have the next slide? So 
So for those who may not have been to Bermuda before, um, please take a look at the map on the left. We are 650 miles off the coast of the Carolinas. We have direct flights from numerous uh, airports on the Eastern seaboard from Miami in the South, Atlanta, Charlotte, uh, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, and Toronto, all of which are about two, two and a half hours. So about one movie and you're here, uh, but also a direct flight to London. So we really are that bridge between the Americas um, and, and Europe and the UK. Um, as Flora said, our, our legal structure is based on the English legal system but our monetary system is much more um, closely aligned with the US system where the Bermuda dollar is a tied and pegged on a one-to-one -one ratio uh, with the US dollar. Um, I think it's also been mentioned that uh, we are home to four banks, um, um, HSBC, of course, uh, one you are all very familiar with there in, in Hong Kong. Um, if I may have the next slide. The premier mentioned we're known as the world's risk capital. Um, we're a quality captive domicile with globally significant commercial reinsurance uh, and insurance leaks linked securities. In fact, uh, roughly 93% of ILSs are based here on the Bermuda Stock Exchange. Um, we have first-class service providers here in Bermuda. Um, the big four accounting firms, all of which have offices here, also have offices in Hong Kong. The uh, law firms on the island uh, here in Bermuda also all have offices in Hong Kong. Um, the premier touched uh, on um, Daba, as did Flora, so I'll jump past that. But worth mentioning in the next bullet, um, we've recently had reaffirmation by S&P of Bermuda's A-plus rating. That was in May. And in June, Moody's reaffirmed our A2 rating. So very stable, um, very secure. One other nice thing about Bermuda, um, we are one of six jurisdictions on the globe that have U.S. Customs preclearance. So when you go through the Bermuda airport, if you're traveling back to the US, you were already pre-cleared and you don't have to do a thing when you step foot on US soil. Next slide, please. It's been mentioned some of the connections, uh, companies that share a Bermuda, Hong Kong um, um, in their DNA, of course, of course, ASET. HSBC, as was already mentioned, uh, they um, bought the Bank of Bermuda back in 2004. So their logo flies proudly here as it does in Hong Kong. Uh, and as Flora mentioned, Jardine Matheson, um, equally, they're a Hong Kong conglomerate, but um, um, with, uh, with a presence here in Bermuda as well. Could I have the next slide? Those are just two examples of many, by the way. Lots of opportunities to invest in Bermuda, um, whether it's infrastructure, technology, um, real estate, businesses, hotel developments, subsea cables or satellites, or the blue economy. On the right, um, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a QR code. If you, uh, or perhaps clients you um, advise, have interest in investing in Bermuda, uh, I'll leave this slide here for just long enough for you to grab that QR code. It'll take you to some additional information about how you might invest in Bermuda. May I have the next slide? The premier mentioned several uh, types of uh, work permits that allow companies and individuals to come and um, start a business in, in Bermuda. I'll, um, I'll concentrate uh, on the, the two on the right. I first want to share with you the work from Bermuda certificate. Uh, this is also known as digital nomad. As more and more of us are able to work from anywhere, Bermuda launched this program uh, during the times of COVID. And um, pleased to say that um, for a small 
for a small uh, island like ours, we had 1,271 applications, uh, over 1,000, 1,068 of them were approved. And the high water mark, we had over 900 individuals uh, who came to the island to live, work, and play, um, causing a $23 million economic impact. Um, even now, as COVID hopefully begins to subside, we still have over 216 families who took us up on the work from Bermuda digital nomad opportunity, liked it so, so much that they've stayed. On the far right, uh, the economic investment certificate uh, that the premier mentioned. Uh, in the short time since this was launched, we've had 21 applications approved. Uh, to, to qualify for an economic investment certificate, uh, one must invest $2.5 million or more in any of several categories that include real estate, a business, a charity, and that allows those individuals or families to uh, have a temporary residency during the course of five years. But at the end of five years, it be, it's a track for permanent residency um, we've had $349 million of investments into the economy on the EIC, and it may be something you'll be interested in yourselves or want to recommend to your clients. May I have the next slide? So when I started, I said there'd be an invitation at the end, and hopefully you don't need uh, too much of an arm twist to come join us in paradise. But if you are looking for an excuse, uh, in at the end of October, there's two great events that happen to be right next to each other. Bermuda Tech Week is October 24th through the 28th. My organization, the BDA, hosts a tech summit uh, October 26th through the 28th. So if you're interested in technology, if you're interested in what we're doing in Bermuda in that space, I invite you to join us. There'll be more information on our website uh, as soon as next week about how to register. But if you might also happen to be a golfer, in addition to having interest in technology, the PGA Tours Butterfield Bermuda Championship is the days following our tech summit. So it's a good one-two punch. And I hope you might join us um, in October, if not before. And I think I just had one last slide. and. And I'll hand it back to you, Andrew, to uh, navigate us through any questions there might be. Thank you very much indeed, David. Um, the last slide was brilliant. Um, that really summed it all up extremely well and uh, a very tempting invitation as well. We do have quite a few questions um, that have come in. So perhaps I could um, use uh, moderator's privilege to begin. Uh, perhaps I, if I might, uh, address uh, Ms. The, uh, the Premier himself first. Um, aside, of course, from financial services and, and, and you know, the quality captive um, insurance market, LISs and the rest of it, um, as all speakers have mentioned, Bermuda's location is incredibly uh, strategically significant. Um, do you see that Industries and services other than those, um, for example, tourism or marine and aviation registration, uh, David touched on uh, infrastructure, green finance, flourishing in, in the years um, ahead. What would be your vision of that, Premier? Well, we are certainly um, restricted slightly or somewhat due to our capacity. But at the same time, I think that we are open to anyone who wants to have a global business. So. The space of where you say our geographic location is certainly strategic. It works for certainly global business. When you're talking about um, equidistant between Europe and also the West Coast of the United States, which is the uh, tech uh, center of the world. Um, so the industries you mentioned, yes, but we are focused certainly on uh, what works for us. And surprisingly, Bermuda's strength is our regulatory regime. It's very rare that you hear people talk about, you know, regulation is a strength, but that's where we find ourselves uh, most um, at. So. We look forward to the growth opportunities. We believe digital finance is going to be huge and certainly climate risk finance is going to be huge as well. Thank you, Premier. Um, can I put the next question which has come in from the uh, audience to uh, Flora? Uh, well, we've all, we all know that Bermuda is, is based as it were on the UK common law system. 
but uh, I'm asked, since various acts of Bermuda's parliament have been passed, Bermuda laws have since diverged from those of the UK, and the latter do not now necessarily apply. How much persuasive value does the English common law still hold over Bermuda in the making of new laws or the enforcement of existing ones? Um, I, I would say in the areas of uh, corporate commercial laws, of course, the Bermuda Companies Act is uh, in itself um, a, a unique uh, piece of Jewish uh, legislation. But I would say that from my experience, um, the UK common law and uh, cases and judgment are still a very high persuasive um, authority uh, in Bermuda. Of course, Bermuda's legislation is not identical to those uh, in UK or in Hong Kong. For example, uh, in, in Bermuda, uh, comparing to other jurisdictions, if a company wants to do a, uh, for example, capital reduction uh, of its issue share capital, uh, probably in some jurisdiction, there's still um, this requirement to uh, have some process uh, approved by the court. Uh, but uh, Bermuda Economies Act has made this uh, process simple, but in the meantime, protecting uh, shareholders by requiring, of course, the company has to be solvent and the shareholders will have to approve the reduction uh, by a special resolution. Uh, but there's no need to have a court process. And in fact, um, the Bermuda legislation has sent, has set a precedent uh, and probably a benchmark for um, other jurisdictions when they update the Companies Act. So I would say that, you know, yes, of course, you know, the Bermuda legislation is not 100% identical to those in the UK, uh, but that's a good reason for it. But in terms of the uh, common law uh, cases, uh, persuasive authority, we still think that the UK uh, cases still have a very uh, high persuasive authority in Bermuda when there's a dispute. Thank you, Flora. Um, and now, perhaps, if I may turn to David for a moment. Um, again, we've you've all spoken um, very convincingly about Bermuda as a great destination for registration and investment. From a Hong Kong or even from a greater China perspective, what would you say looking forward are, are the attractions for uh, new and young companies or corporates in Hong Kong or greater China for coming to Bermuda? Well, uh, we have touched on a bit of it. I, I think safety, stability uh, are, are two themes worth, worth doubling down on. Um, I think um, a, a government and a regulator that are pro-business and open to investment. But, you know, the premier said something really important when we started, which is Bermuda is a great place to invest money. It's a great place to raise capital. Um, but it's a terrible place to try to hide capital. And I, I share that because there are other jurisdictions in the world that um, maybe don't pay as much attention to brand, both the country's brand, but also the companies that would want to come here. Um, that's something Bermuda takes very seriously. And so for investors uh, on your membership or individuals that, that they may be advising, um, it's a safe and stable jurisdiction that's uh, welcoming, that's sophisticated, and um, one they can be proud to invest in. Well, thank you, David. I think this regulatory point is extremely Im important. I mean, Hong Kong, in Hong Kong, we, we have similar um, issues in terms of people's perceptions, and it's good to know that uh, the regulatory regime is as strong as, as you mentioned. Um, I have a question from the audience specifically for, uh, the, for the Premier. Um, it is as follows. Uh, it's an anonymous attendee, so I'm not sure where it comes from. The Constitution of Bermuda uh, only applies to Bermudian residents and not to non-residents. How would you say that this has affected investment opportunities for businesses run by non-Bermudan residents as compared to Bermudan ones, does your answer change depending on whether the business is based overseas uh, or locally? Thanks for the question. Uh, what I would say is that from the perspective of a Bermuda registered company, the constitution would apply. Um, we are known for um, our strong legal footing. Uh, there was a question about um, earlier, um, Ms. Wong had answered it. Uh, speaking about um, the divergence between the UK 
and the UK laws, but everything in Bermuda is in a common law jurisdiction, um, common law uh, appeals of our law go to the Judicial uh, Council of the Privy Council, of course, the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. And so I think that that does not affect or impact um, our investment as it's widely known uh, that if you have a Bermuda registered company, you are protected under the laws of the country. Um, and there is no fear of depending on who or where they may come from. That's a very reassuring answer, uh, Mr. Premier. Thank you so much. Um, if I, I have one or two more questions before I pose them. Um, may I also mention to participants, they still have the opportunity to type in uh, questions and answers into the, uh, into the Q&A um, box through the icon. Uh, if you want to make use of this, this opportunity. Before I go to the next question from uh, the audience, uh, could I ask perhaps if our chairman, Julia, would, um, would like to uh, ask anything in particular of any or all of our panelists? Yes, absolutely. Could we hear more about the tech summit, please? That sounds so exciting. What's the focus of that? <laughs> I really want to so, come by the way. Well, this will be uh, our fourth tech summit. Last year, due to COVID, it, it had to be all virtual. Uh, it coincided with my first week as CEO. And so I must say, I was rather impressed that um, we had over 800 registrants from around the globe, 52 countries represented. So it was you know, pretty impressive for uh, my first week to see that Bermuda could attract that many um, people from, from all over the the globe to be part of it. This year, I'm proud to say we're back in person at the Hamilton Princess, which if you haven't been to Bermuda for, before, it's a beautiful hotel right on Hamilton Harbor. We'll have three half days of content. And best of all, the afternoons will be free for networking and to enjoy this beautiful island. So whether you like golf or scuba diving or fishing or shopping and dining, all those things will be available in the afternoons. As far as content goes, it'll really cross a, a number of the different subsectors within tech. So certainly digital finance, um, insure tech, subsea cables, a uh, number of the things we've talked about. But if you, can, if you can dream of it in tech, we'll be covering it and talking about it and bringing in panelists and experts over those three half days of content. Right, so there's lots of metaverse uh, discussions going on, I would imagine. Then. And I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, offer an opportunity for the Premier if he'd like to share in that answer, because it's really his greatest passion that Bermuda be a home uh, and a, um, a launching pad for all types of technology opportunities. And so, Premier, this has been your, your vision, your dream. Uh, what would you add to, to what I've shared so far? Yes, please. Uh, hate to say, but in the interest of time, I'll certainly defer. I think you gave it a good cover of it. And I hope that people will uh, take advantage of the QR code and the information to learn more about it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Um, I have uh, two final questions from the audience. And then as the Premier rightly says, unfortunately, we are coming up against a little bit of time constraint, but I'm not as worried about that as I was, because I think perhaps Julia and I could work on a joint Commonwealth Chamber of Commerce mission to Bermuda as one of our next uh, big initiatives. Let's see. Uh, I have a, a question, um, a, a specific question. I'm not sure to whom this is best addressed. Possibly the Premier, maybe Flora would also have a view. It is as follows. No doubt BEPS and global minimum tax, uh, and I'll add there that that's an issue which is um, very hot here on which I have quite strong views myself, will influence Bermuda's uh, tax environment. But do the panelists expect any similar pressure on CGT, wealth taxes, IHT, and so on? From a global perspective, um, I'm uncertain that that is the focus um, of, I guess I'll call the European Union. Um, <laughs> more widely than the um, OECD as a lot of these things are being driven um, out of Europe. Uh, but what I will say is that Bermuda's view in this is that we want to make sure that we remain competitive, but we also want to make sure that we have a fair tax environment locally uh, that supports um, investment and continued investment. So we don't expect any of those global pressures, but what we want to make sure is that our tax environment always remains favorable. So the uh, global minimum tax will have an impact on the income tax environment, 
uh, but we're not expecting any type of similar pressures in the future, as it, although those haven't come up, we can never tell what the future holds. That's an extremely helpful answer, Premier. The last question for the moment, um, I, I, I'd like to put this to all panelists. Could you individually share with, with us and the audience um, one or two takeaways on your best or most memorable, let's say, personal experiences of living and working in Bermuda? Um, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll start with Flora as the Hong Kong, uh, uh, representative, as it were, and maybe we'll give the Premier the final word. Uh, so, Flora. Uh, yes, I, I, uh, probably my most personal relationship with Bermuda would be my last trip to Bermuda. Uh, that was surely a, a memorable trip. Um, the whole trip, actually, from Hong Kong to uh, Bermuda took about 30 hours. So um, that was a pretty long way. Um, of course, the island itself is uh, truly beautiful. Um, I was really impressed. Surely, I I agree with um, what uh, David has said about you know Bermuda being having a very sophisticated lifestyle. Um, I I was truly impressed. I think it's a very good combination of Bermuda being a, a lifestyle place as well as a, a business place. Um, so I I think my takeaway uh, with uh, Bermuda as an ideal jurisdiction of choice is that um, it is both a place where uh, with very high uh, legal compliance standard, uh, an ideal legal regulatory place, uh, as well as a place if you want to go there and enjoy yourself, uh, relax and chill, uh, is also a very uh, good jurisdiction and destination to go to. Thank you, Flora. David, you've already said a few things on this, but a quick take from yourself. Andrew, thank you. I, I think my, my takeaway from uh, my experiences in Bermuda is it's an incredibly innovative uh, jurisdiction. Um, and while we're a country, in many ways, we're also a small town uh, surrounded by beautiful pink beaches, but at the heart of it is this very, very sophisticated business center that's in a six block area. And the reason I share that is because speed is also significant in oh. Bermuda. Yeah. We walk down the street, going to work, going to lunch. We all see each other all day long. I might run into Premier Burt, you know, on the way to grab a sandwich for lunch or a member of his cabinet. And so all of the business community, government officials, the regulator are constantly interacting and it allows us to be very swift to market. Thank you, David. And um, as I said, um, uh, final word for the Premier, because you, sir, have been um, running the whole country for the last four years. So I'm sure that you'll have um, uh, one or two good takeaways for our, for our audience. And thank you again for being here today. Oh, um, it's actually been a pleasure. Uh, certainly, um, an hour is a short time. But I think what is the most important thing, uh, tomorrow we'll actually be celebrating five years of the anniversary of my election victory. And what I've witnessed over the five years is an entire country that um, has gone through difficult times, as you can imagine with the coronavirus, but has also committed itself to continuing to advance, uh, continuing to innovate, and continuing to be that place uh, where uh, companies can come, innovate their products and services, and sell them to the entire world. Uh, from my perspective, what I think is the most important thing for Bermuda's sake is though that we do have a vibrant parliamentary democracy on either side of the political spectrum. Both sides are united in the view that Bermuda is a premier international financial services jurisdiction and will continue to be one. So I'm blessed to have been born here. I'm blessed to be raising a family here. And it is an amazing place. So I hope that you all will take the opportunity to visit. I hope that this, that this has been informative. And certainly um, Bermuda has a lot to offer and we are open for business. Thank you very much, Mr. Premier. Uh, you can expect me to be booking my tickets very soon. Um, distinguished guests, I, I now, unfortunately, in the interests of time, uh, need to bring this webinar to its conclusion. Uh, for those in the audience whose questions haven't been answered, and we've only really started to skim the surface of all the issues that have been raised by our panelists, please do feel free to write to us at the Commonwealth Chamber, and we'll forward your questions to the distinguished speakers uh, for their replies. Um, I'd like to repeat my thanks to the speakers for their very 
uh, patient replies to the questions today. And for myself, I'm certainly convinced that the investment and finan financial opportunities in Bermuda for Hong Kong corporates and individuals will grow when we re-emerge into post-COVID normality. Uh, uh, I'd also like to thank our members and guests for signing up for this event, despite the difficulty of all the different, different time zones involved. Please do keep an eye on our website for future Commonwealth Chamber functions. Let us know if you think that you, there are other topics related to Bermuda or otherwise, which we should address. Uh, and with that, may I now hand the virtual floor back to our chairman, Julia Charlton, for her concluding remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Um, thank you, Premier Burt. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Thank you, Flora. Fantastic presentations. And I have so much takeaway. And if you're not excited about Bermuda after listening to this webinar, I don't know when you ever would be. <laughs> I loved in particular the reference to the Bermuda Triangle, mm -hmm. innovation, leading services, speedy implementation. And I think it's, um, I, I would say that Bermuda must be well on its way to meet the aim of making Bermuda the climate risk capital of the world, because with the amazing depth of the insurance industry, I think Bermuda is so well placed to do that. As a lawyer, I'm so impressed by the um, Digital Asset um, Act. I think that's so significant. And the fact that you have 15 major virtual asset service providers in Bermuda is, is such a testament to the robustness as well as the innovation of your um, legal system and obviously the administration of that. And I think we can understand from that why Bermuda is such a leading uh, financial services center for everybody. It's, it's all extremely exciting. So that brings us to the end of this session today. I'd like to thank the speakers again. Honor to have you here, Premier Burt, and to listen to your amazing insights about governance and the economy of Bermuda. And thank you also, David and Flora. Um, and very special thanks also to everyone who joined us today. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs>